Uh, there's some pokey hair. All right. There's Megan. Good image. Sorry, I was a bit late starting. We've had a lot of stuff going on to get going, including getting some air going in this building because it is hot. Fabulous. Where's this picture of the elephants at the watering hole? Not it. Mouse. We did that experiment, didn't we? <laughs> okay. So we talked a little bit about this yesterday. What sent her? Elmo and your weird contrast. What senses did we talk about yesterday that we can think of that these guys have? Hearing. Hearing. And they have really big ears. They probably help them hear, right? Smell. smell. And what do they smell through? Vibrations. They smell through the vibrations? That's oh, an interesting I twisted know. sense. I mean, like another one. They feel vibrations. They feel vibrations feet. through their feet. Yeah. Their notes. They, they probably do. They probably do. Um, what else? I do you think maybe they smell things in the wind as well as smell stuff in that oh so clean oh, with the water? The they might smell the ozone from that the rain coming because they certainly change their direction when water's coming in, right? When rain's coming in, I should say. Sight, they see things. Even though their eyes seem small in comparison to the rest of the body, they do have big bodies, very big bodies. Um, they, so many wrinkles. they do have a lot of wrinkles because they can become much fatter when they eat, much fatter when they take in a lot of water, but then they also have periods where they're not going to be taking in as much water, as much food. Now, this is a little bit um, to the side of the, of the discussion, but like I said, we got ahead a little bit yesterday with the fact that we actually went into science, the other two classes didn't. This is something that has recently been classified as such. Those are African elephants. Those are um, not forest elephants. Those would be, uh, Asian. They're called, no, African. Um, there are forest elephants and there are, uh, I think they're called forest you wouldn't see, plains elephants, I think. They're, when they studied their DNA, they found that they actually have different DNA. And so there's a push to label those as two different species. Because we've always looked at them as just Asian and African elephants. Those are the only two different kinds of elephants. Asian elephants have smaller ears. Well, it turns out that the two different kinds of African elephants have different kinds of trunks and they're different sizes and they actually have, bless you, they actually have different size ears. All African elephants are now endangered because people are hunting. The forest elephants, those are not forest. Those would be the plains elephants, the ones that are more, um, they're spotted more easily. The forest elephants are slightly smaller. They're darker in color, whereas those are bright. Um, they're kind of light gray. Forest elephants, I think they said 80 to 90% of them have gone away in the last 20 years. What do you think? Um, Hunters. Yes, taking their tusks. Those have dropped in number, I think they said 60% in the last 15 years. Same reason, hunters. Number two cause is habitat loss. Why are they losing habitat? Because of us. Not it, us. They're building buildings, but the bigger thing is farming. With the growth of the numbers of people on earth, you have to feed people, right? 
And in feeding people, you have to grow larger farms. And when you're growing farms, it's taking up their space because they have to have large areas to move. Large areas. That's just the nature of elephants. Um, and it's a growing problem. So I know that's not related to our discussion, but it's something that's very interesting because that just came out last week. So elephant science is something that's very much still growing. Asian elephants uh, are not endangered. There's lots and lots of Asian elephants. All right, so we know they have uh, good hearing and something's cluing them in to rain coming from 100 miles away. That essential question is written up on the board. And that's the essential question for this whole module. How do elephants sense rainstorms from more than 100 miles away? In many cases, it can be 250 miles or farther. It can be a very long way away. So they're picking it up, probably using more than one sense, but they must have some incredible sense because we can't sense a rainstorm coming from over 100 miles away. I'm not going to stay in the Shreveport and know that a rainstorm's, you know, five days away in Denver. That would be pretty amazing. Who needs a weatherman after all? You have that. Fire the weatherman. They're wrong a lot anyway. Um, what I was trying to get you guys to respond with yesterday, where we could go to get more information about elephant sensory structures, is we could look online. Um, some of the new Netflix specials, or who in here has heard of Curiosity Stream? It's a online app, right? You could find out more information about elephants through Curiosity Stream. It's like a video streaming library, pretty much. Um, we could look for articles about elephants, like the one that we already read about them sensing rainstorms from a long way away, or science articles. So this book, I was so excited to read last year and so disappointed when they um, sent us away to our houses because I like when they turn actual science resources into books and sources that I can use on my children. Okay. So we're going to read parts of this. What kind of information do you think we need to be looking for if what we're focusing on right now is our phenomenon question. What sensory structures, I'm not staring at you, I'm looking at the board above you. What sensory structures do elephants have to sense information? So what information do you think we need to be listening for when we hear these words? How they take in information? And what information they get from the environment, right? Okay. Can someone turn off one of the lights? Maybe it'll help with the glare. They're walking. That's a mom and a youngin. A juvenile. Can you turn off the other one? Maybe it'll help with the glare more. I don't know. Oh, no, not both of them. You have to write. Still got glare though. Let's see. It is glare because the book is just a little bit shiny. It's also the light coming off that map. Okay, so 
puts less glare on it. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Okay. So the areas we're talking about are in Africa. In this area of Namibia, your southern Namibia, Etosha National Park, Etosha Salt Pan. So in other words, if it's a salt pan, that would be an area that often has a lot of water. And when the water evaporates, what gets left behind? Salt. I mean, think about it. We only have a tiny bit of salt in our body, but when the water evaporates, it leaves salt behind on your skin, right? Anybody ever notice that? That's why sweat tastes salty. The water goes away. Y'all didn't know that? Yeah. When the water goes away, what's left in your skin is salt. You have just a tiny amount of salt in your body. That's what carries electrical charges, makes your brain fire, makes your heart beat. It's the salt, salt's in your body. Okay. And you don't with the mask on. But if you notice at the end of the day, if you've been sweating with a mask on, your, your mask will smell. It smells a mixture of dirty and salty. Salt has a smell. It does. Okay. Mushara water hole. So the salt pan is around the water hole because the salt is just the left behind stuff after the water's gone. Okay. And then in Namibia, as you go east, you also have Madumu National Park. So all of this is in the southern region of Africa. Okay, Namibia. So it's west part, southwest part of Africa. All right. Look at these photos. Beautiful, right? So it's not that the giraffes are tiny, it's just that they're far off in the distance and that makes for a gorgeous photo. The fact that their tusks go out straight tell you that those are the, I believe they said they're plains elephants, forest elephants tusks curve. So the one that I happen to draw on my board, that would be a plains elephant, my LED board. That's a plains elephant because its tusk goes out straight and it has big ears. So that's the kind of elephant we're looking at in the elephant scientist. This is one of the scientists that wrote this book. You see their ears are forward. That means they're mad at her or mad at the photographer that's taking that picture. Well, that's why their ears are forward. That's a warning for her to get back because they run very fast because they're big. Okay. Here's another picture. You see their ears are forward. It's possible that they're fanning themselves because they also use their ears to cool off but it's possible that that's in a warning. And I know I'm giving you all a lot of information that's not just about their senses, but elephants are really cool. All right, page one, unearthing elephant secrets. Caitlin O'Connell, that's her and who we saw on the first page, peered through her binoculars to peer means to look. I'm trying to let you see the pictures before I zoom in on the words. Amazing photography. Peered through her binoculars and spotted an elephant family walking in the distance. Suddenly, the leader stopped in its tracks. The elephant matriarch, the oldest and wisest female of the group, stood still, shifting her weight, and leaned forward on her front feet. Is that maybe a clue? Okay, so I need you to turn to page 15 in your logbook. And Megan, I need you to have your logbook open to page 15. Okay. What? 
bless you, go get a piece of paper and you're gonna have to transfer this to your logbook tomorrow or tonight. Go get a piece of paper. Um see that one's ears. See the ears forward? The ears forward, ears forward, ears forward, ears forward. They're not doing that to listen. And just like it said, they're leaning forward on their front legs. Uh uh. Leaning forward on their front feet. Let's listen to this. At times, the elephant would lift a foot or flatten her trunk on the ground, seeming to concentrate on something. So why is she putting her feet on the ground and her trunk on the ground, concentrating on something? What is she receiving from the ground? Okay, so look on your page 15. Your question is, what sensory structures do elephants have to sense information? Do you think she's sensing something with her trunk and her feet? Yeah. So write that down. You're supposed to record any evidence from this article, what we're reading. It helps answer the question. What did we write again? On page 15 on that box. What evidence have we just heard that she might be using something in her body to receive information? What part of her body is she using? The trunk and her front feet. She's leaning on them, seeming to concentrate on something. I can't underline stuff in this book. It, when I try to erase, it'll turn white. I do have a flag though. Okay. It's this line and this line. Okay. It's the line above the yellow and the line at the front of the, the beginning of the yellow line. Does that make sense? So it kind of seems like her feet, she might be using as a sensory organ, right? We don't use our feet as sensory organs, not unless you're barefoot and walking on something and oops, I stepped on something. I stepped on a scorpion before, didn't feel good. Okay, um, as the mighty matriarch scanned the African horizon, the other elephants followed suit. So if she's scanning the horizon, what is she doing? She's looking. She's looking. Stopping mid stride and standing as still as statues in the sprawling scrub desert of Etosha National Park. Why are they stopping and being still? They are trying to feel vibrations. So you might want to write that. They're stopping mid stride and standing as still as statues. Right there. What is it? Yes, do bulleted points. Don't do sentences. Hang on, I'm doing this this way. Hold on. I'm trying to get this where it's easier for you guys. This glare is just killing it and not in a good way. Well, oftentimes people say we're killing it and mean it like a compliment. Yeah, no, that's not what I'm meaning. Sorry, my foot is 
Yeah. You know that. Yeah, it just means that your leg hurts, your foot hurts. Yeah. My head, 14 days of this mess. My head, my head. I'd be good with all the lights off. My head would appreciate it. The doctor came in last night, turned off the lights in the room. I was like, oh, thank you so much. I could hug you right now. And he told me, you need an excuse because you need to not work tomorrow. I was like, yeah, right. I have somewhere to be. Oh, I just love those bells so much. Yes, I want to have a celebration. Yeah, like the elephant did the celebration for us, right? Um, not an elephant trunk, a um, like a shell or part of a tree or something like that, but not an elephant trunk. Um, there are still countries where you can legally buy and sell uh, ivory. There are still countries that you can legally buy and sell ivory. Ivory is their tusk, and they kill the elephant just for the ivory. Why? It kills the elephant when they take it. That's why they kill elephants. No, they don't. They don't. What? What if the elephant is sick? It, it, it doesn't matter. Um, you're not supposed to kill elephants. When you kill top animals, the other animals that depend on them, like those elephants eat certain trees and bushes. And when you take out a top animal, it affects all the other animals under it in the food pyramid and in the ecosystem. And so it destroys entire ecosystems. Why don't they just take the tusk? Because it kills the animal. Taking the tusk kills the animal. Do you think the elephant's going to roll over and say, here, take it? <laughs> here, I give of myself willingly. They can pass it, pa make the elephant pass out, then take the stuff. Just go kill them. Would, would you willingly lay over and let someone cut off your ears? <laughs> okay. Here's some more. During one summer, Caitlin O'Connell watches for elephants from the top of the bunker of Mushara Waterhole in Natosha National Park. And an elephant matriarch below cautiously leads her family group to water. Sometimes it takes hours for a matriarch to deem it safe to enter an open area of the water hole. We saw in the picture before at the water hole, it's not just elephants that go there, is it? So it, that could be why it takes some hours to get there. Now, this one, does she look happy? No. Nope. An elephant matriarch stops to ensure it's safe to approach a water hole along with scanning her ears and smelling with her trunk. So are those senses we need to write down? Yeah. She's scanning with her ears. I'm gonna zoom in on this caption. Scanning with her ears and smelling with her trunk. And I think you guys already have that she stands still and leans forward on her front feet as if listening to something in the ground like that whole caption is helpful. She's not just scanning with her ears. She's uh, oh, <laughs> she knows there's a human there to take that picture. They clearly have incredible hearing. You know, the fact that they weigh a couple tons. How much the elephants cough on it? How much do they what? Oh. oh. Zoos buy them. I don't know what they call. Zoos buy animals. Are you the pet Yeah, it would destroy everything. It doesn't matter, it would destroy everything. If you're intelligent animals, it would be with a group. Your house will be bye bye. <laughs> That's a start.
<laughs> okay, does everybody have this about the hearing and leaning? I'm forward? almost done. Okay. And smelling. Your fence. Your fence would be nothing. The whole neighborhood would be by and then if a human just comes out, they're just going to squish you. Well, no, they just pick you up and toss you. See those tusks? Oh, yeah. Each grab grab you with their trunk and just eat. And then they get And I mean, all it's doing is trying to get back with this group because elephants live in groups. They don't belong alone. Now, my goal, I don't know how we're going to make it. Today is kind of an experiment in the classroom. It's to get through one and a half lessons today. I don't know if we're going to be able to ever do that because these lessons are long. And as much as I want to push through things, it takes time for my little people to get things recorded. Okay. All right. Caitlin watched the same watched the scene from I gotta zoom out a little bit. A 10 foot square cement bunker. Why was she so far back in a cement bunker? So she <laughs> wanted to get a tag <laughs> near Mushara waterhole, a popular drinking area for animals, because it's not just elephants coming. We already saw there's crocodile there. Um, there's gonna be wildebeest oh, there, there's gonna be giraffes. Hyena. Zebras, hyenas, a lot of different yeah. animals are coming there. A popular drinking site for animals that was named after a tree common to the area. So it's called Mushara because that was the name of a tree that was common in that area. The American scientist who had traveled to Namibia to study elephants in their natural habitats couldn't believe what she was seeing. I immediately recognized the behavior pattern said Caitlin. I had seen the specific sequence of actions while studying the mating calls of much smaller animals known as plant hoppers. So she had studied little bugs, tiny insects that send signals to each other by vibrating plants with their limbs. So these little bitty bugs vibrate plants with their limbs and she's seeing the same behavior in a massive animal named an elephant. When a male plant hopper hears the vibrational love call of a female, yeehaw, he freezes in place so he can focus and listen to the message. He'll stop, press down on his legs, move forward, and shift directions. Did you really have to do all that movement? Then he'll freeze again and press down and listen with his feet. So the elephant did the same thing. Apparently, the plant hopper hears a female, stops, bends down the front legs, goes forward, and then he realizes, I guess, she's somewhere else, and he turns and bends down and keeps doing that. And men, that's what the elephant does too. Do the men stay with the women that they? We're. I don't know if we're talking about that or not. I don't know. Here's the plant hopper. Ew! It's little bitty. A Hawaiian plant hopper straddles the leaf stem. In other words, one leg on one side, one leg on the other side, so that he doesn't fall off. In a magnified view, they transmit their calls through their feet. So he's picking up the call of the female through the vibrations in his feet. So what animal is that like? An elephant. So the elephant's picking up calls through his feet, just like a bug. I never knew we had a corona. We don't. Plants, plant hoppers transmit their calls through their feet and into the plants as vibrations. So the elephant isn't transmitting its noise or picking up noise through a plant, it's picking it up through what? The plant. They're standing on plants? No. I don't want to meet that plant. Through what? What do they walk on? 
The ground. The ground. The dirt. What was your hand up for, baby? Uh, yes. <laughs> Studies show that many small animals, from spiders and scorpions to insects and frogs, communicate by vibrating. Say that again. Vibrating objects in their environment. So, how about we put that in our stuff? Bugs. Actually, I'll put the, I'll help right here. Plant hoppers. Um, stop. Press down. on a plant. Oh, with his legs or on his legs. We can't see this yet. Plant hopper, hopper stop, press down on a plant on his legs. Move forward. and shift directions. He listens. With his feet. Then another bulleted point, many animals Spiders. What else? Frogs. Scorpions, which I just so love after being stung by one. Yep, turn my foot black. Yes, we do have scorpions around here. Insects communicate. They're clear, so they're very dangerous because you can't see them and they're small. Communicate by vibrating objects in their environment. Jackson, I don't see your square popping up, but class started at uh, about 8.20. Uh, Miss Van Diver, this is Jackson's mother. We were on the phone with the office trying to figure out how to get him logged on because the information that you sent me, it wasn't working. So... Really? You can call the office. We we I was on the phone with them for a while trying to get him logged on. So that's why he's just joining class. Okay. Um, okay. Video will be uh, posted. Be, uh, posted. Uh, okay. Uh, probably around eleven or so. And okay. The, the information that he missed will be in pickup then. Okay. So we're on okay. Fifteen. So it'd be on that first page that I messaged you. Elephant senses. Okay. Uh, it says lesson six activity guide. And right okay. now, students are writing in with bulleted points evidence that we're pulling from this page that I'm reading. Okay. Uh, of animals, it's supposed to be for elephants, but it's really picking up information using their senses from the environment. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. And right now, it's bugs and other things picking up the information from their environment. Okay. Thank you. Okay, everybody got that? I know it's a lot, isn't it? It's amazing how something so large as an elephant uses a similar communication technique to something so tiny as that little plant hopper, which as you guys showed, it doesn't really look very pretty, does it? No. And it looks nothing like 
an elephant. It does not look like a coronavirus bug. Well, I mean, you have a black hood on your head, but it doesn't mean you look like a black horse. Okay. That, that looks like an aphid. Has anybody ever heard of an aphid? Uh, aphids suck the juices from rose plants, among other things. That's why we know of them. Because they suck out uh, ornamental plants. No. Are you a rose plant? Yeah. I mean, no. I ate one. Oh, it's the I ate one. Sorry. You ate an aphid? A rose. Oh, yeah. Um, rose water is actually in certain uh, cultures. That's something that people drink. Ooh, or they add it. Awesome. No, it's pretty good, actually. Um, they actually add it to their, um, like, as a marinade oh, chicken. Oh, so pretty good. Oh. It's good. It doesn't sound right, but it, it tastes good. It yeah. does. Rose. Rose. No. no. Um, a little because of that eye. The horse flies don't generally have red eyes. Street flies have red eyes. So just sit down here. Yes. That closed down clever. Clever keeps popping up every time I open up. I'll get it back. I'll get it back. It's coming. Share. There we go. Okay. Better? Okay, Jackson. Oh, and it went off. Hold on just a second. Figures. You do that to me. I want to make sure Jackson and Megan, you guys can see um the notes that I have posted right now, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Perfect. All right, my students in class. We already discussed the effect on the test rate, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, spiders, frogs, scorpions, things like plant hoppers, other small insects, they can go places that an elephant cannot. <laughs> a frog can spend his entire life inside one plant, which is pretty amazing. Frogs can be tiny, y'all. Um, an elephant can't go walking up inside a plant, but they can vibrate objects in their environment. What object would an elephant be vibrating? A tree. It, he could shake a tree in the ground. Definitely the ground. It'd shake a tree. They knock over trees. Okay. I know, but if it tries to It'd be the end of the plant. I don't think so. All right, have my friends in class got this? No. No. There are plants that you can buy at Lowe's in the inside area. They're kept close to the orchids. They're called bromeliads, like the question. Called bromeliads. And they look like a spiky plant, but part of the plant is bright red, bright pink, bright orange. They're um, called epiphytes. They grow up high in trees and rainforests. We call them growing in rainforests in Costa Rica when we're there. And frogs will live their entire life inside one bromeliad. Because the way the bromeliad is structured, it collects a lot of rain. Of course, rainforest gets a lot of rainfall daily, um, especially cloud forest. So the frog is very tiny. It spends its entire life in that one bromeliad, 
and what it needs to eat will fall down that grown way. The little mosquitoes will fall in the grown way to get trapped in that little bit of rainfall, and they will get all their needs taken care of. In that so, so what's the saying? A plant will eat Yes, and they will vibrate that plant to attract flies into it. So they manipulate their environment using vibration. No, they're tiny. Their whole life, they're, they're very tiny and they're beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to go and continue reading, guys, okay? And I'm going to shift this to the other side. That way, Jackson can continue read, uh, writing as I shift, okay? Okay, these vibrations are called seismic signals. Zoom out just a little bit. When transmitted, when transmitted through the ground and are so low in frequency that most humans can't hear them, or in this case, feel them. So when bugs, when frogs, when spiders and scorpions are doing these, these movements, these vibrations to vibrate their environment, we don't feel them because they're so low in intensity. Once generated, however, the vibrational messages ripple across surfaces like waves on water and ultimately help animals find mates, locate prey, and establish territories. You guys have seen animals that are territorial or you've heard adults make the comment, this dog is territorial or this cat is very territorial. Right? Yeah, like so what do you think being territorial for an animal means? Bryson. Like standing their ground. Standing their ground. I think it's their home and no other animal needs to come into it, right? Right. Why do you think animals will establish a territory? Like a group of elephants. They will have a territory. What is the purpose to that territory, Kaylee? Is there unlimited food in every place? Is there unlimited mates for every animal in every place? Maybe. No. No, there's not. So do you think keeping territories keeps everything balanced? Yeah. So like you have land and like so other like dogs that dogs. So they Okay, let me give you an example with us people in this room. If everybody, all the students at Keysville, rushed to the McDonald's on Mansfield Road <laughs> at the same time to get lunch, and we didn't call ahead, would McDonald's have enough food for us? No, no they'd kick us out, wouldn't they? Get out, scram, get away. We don't have enough food for you, right? Right? <laughs> but if every classroom called ahead, thus establishing territory, and every classroom went to a different restaurant in Shreveport and Keithville at the same time, there would be enough food for everybody in there. So is that an example of establishing territory working? Okay. That's a very retail way of doing it, but do y'all understand that a territory helps distribute resources? No. Okay. So for animals, they can't call up a restaurant and get their food. What they can do is to make sure each group of animals has a territory to make sure there's enough food there for that group. And when other animals come into that territory, they're essentially stealing food from that territory. Make sense? Well, they're going to fight over the territory. And it's not just fighting over territory. It's going to be fighting over mates, too. No, you have to allocate your resources. Can they, like, fight for other dogs' But we're not talking about domesticated animals so much as we're talking about spiders, frogs, scorpions, insects, elephants, these animals, where we're talking about vibrations, okay? 
Does everybody understand this? Okay, so let's keep going with this. For example, the male fiddler crab bangs territorial warnings into the sand with his oversized ball. Okay, so let's look up real quick a male fiddler crab. Stop share on this and share on. We used to have uh, hermits. Post attendee. Okay. Buzz. Okay. Okay, you see his one big crab claw? So what is the purpose of that one large claw? For him to bang out on the ground that this is his territory. And you see how one crab claw is really large. And that one claw is the one that he uses to hit the ground with to tell other crabs to stay back. This is his territory. Okay, I want to make sure for Jackson and Megan, you guys can see what I'm showing right now with the male fiddler crab, right? No, ma'am. No? Okay, hold on just a second. What's that? It looks funny. Careful because the bulbs can uh, blow easily. So don't put it in a um, extension bar or extension plug. It has to straighten the wall for a while. Okay, I'm gonna stop share on this and I'll go back to the book. Okay. Okay, so we see why the male fiddler crab has that really big fall now, right? Okay. Um, a blind mole rat pounds its head against the walls of underground tunnels to ensure his neighbor rats know his territory. Have you guys seen the mole rats at the Dallas Zoo? No. no. I caught one. A mole rat? Yeah. A blind mole rat. It's a different kind of rat. He's um one of those faces a mama has to love. Not the prettiest little thing. A blind mole rat. Let me look this guy up. Cause... Class, class. Stop you with the talking. You know what it looks like? It reminds me of a naked mole rat, except this guy actually has hair. It kind it kind of looks like a no-eyed ratatouille. The one with fur. This is the one I was thinking of. They have a big exhibit at the Dallas Zoo, but you can't go in it right now because it's um, corona and they have it closed off. But this is a naked, I'm sorry, a, a blind mole rat, and he bangs his head against the wall to tell the other ones... He knows his territory. 
That's just dirt. That's not ants, that's dirt. So, as I said, he's not the cutest little thing. It's not exactly what Mr. Disney used to design Mickey Mouse. Oh, yeah, it's not. He's a mole? No, he's a, oh, he's a mouse. I said it's not. You need to listen, sir. Okay. All right. So we've now heard different animals use different things to utilize what sense. Well, vibration, right? Okay. So let's add that because those are two other things using vibration. So Male fiddler crab. And again, do this with uh, bulleted points, a little dot or a line out in front. Male fiddler crabs bangs his claws. Claw, just one claw. <laughs> As a warning. Sorry. Our race warning, territorial warning. Get out of my territory, others. Territorial warning. Two other crabs. I'll move this one so it's not confusing anymore. Go get one, babies, over there. Okay. And then the blind mole rat. Seems like a smart one. Blind mole rat runs his head into the wall. Pounds his head into the wall. <laughs> Ace doesn't even do that. No, he has no eyes. Well, of his underground tunnels. Ace has eyes, they just don't work. Tunnels to show he knows his way. Sorry, I'm gonna zoom in. Well, we're, we are getting a lot of information about senses of animals, yes. Is that your potty pass in the ground? She's blind when I and she and she did it. And she still wanted to get out there. How do they know if it's a boy or girl? Who are they? The blind mole rat? Yeah. Uh, pheromones. Ster uh, hormones. Oops. Okay, guys, please stop talking. So you can use the back. That's fine. I say at least Ace does not act like a blind mole rat. <laughs> and when I tell my husband that, he's gonna have no idea what I mean. You don't like banging your head up against the wall. No, he just knocks himself out running into the car or the bed <laughs> or the walls. <laughs> or the truck. So really do you walk out all the time? No, just when he gets excited, takes off running and oh, forgets to curve and just runs straight. You remember when you were so talking about that dog whistle thing? I thought I saw the nut dog that was working on it. And then it's 
Can you not hear it? Wait, I can hear that. Oh, Shh. Humans are supposed to hear. You can't hear that. 3,500 hertz. Way oh, above what there. humans can hear. I can actually hear. Can you hear it? It's my a vibration on my hand. My now, that you can hear. Definitely. Your age, you can probably hear this, but I can't. I can't oh, I can hear that. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, Colby hears it from his room with the door shut. It's horrible. No. That you might hear is a low tone. Now, the dogs can hear that. There's high pitched noises that people your age can hear that people my age cannot. Can you do it again? So you can hear that. We can. I can feel it as a vibration. Because that's what is sound? It is a vibration against your eardrum. Sound is a vibration. And this right here very much exemplifies it, doesn't it? Yeah, we could hear the high pitch. Okay, has everybody got this? Okay. Bless you. Do you have it, Jackson? Bless you. Bless you. Sorry, when you have a teacher that has ADHD, I'm all over the place. If Colby be in his room with his door shut, and he'll shout out to me, turn that off. What? When I haven't said it, fifteen five hertz. Do it again. Oh, you talking about the one that you said that? That you could hear. I can hear it right now because I have a migraine. Wait, you're doing it right now? No. My hearing is more acute when I have a migraine like this. For some reason, like this. Pheromones, hormones. Because he's blind, his nose is a little more sensitive. It's like ace. But I can smell if it's a girl or a girl. Oh, okay. Just, 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 going around just a hormone thing. Like, if you tend to. Yeah. yeah. When I watched this video when the girl had no motion, she she was more vulnerable than to pain a lot more. Yes. But she couldn't show that she was in pain because she was born without motion. Our death, right. our okay, let's keep going this. What's this? I mean. Um, after watching the elephants freeze in unison, what does unison mean? All together. All together. That means at one time. So after watching all the elephants stop all at once, Caitlin excitedly recalled her insect studies. Could it be that the giant mammals were sending and receiving messages to the ground, just like those little plant hoppers? Yes. Scientists already knew elephants communicated over long distances through low frequency rumbles. Okay, so low frequency would be this. So it would be something below that because we can hear that. It would be something below the 100 hertz. Okay, so they knew elephants were communicating over long distances through low frequency rumbles that rolled through the air, but it was so low that we can't hear it. But was it also possible the animals were talking and listening to one another through their feet? So let's add. More post -its. <laughs> Science uses a lot of post it notes. Yes, yeah, a good thing that I happened to, to download that to mess with my dogs because it comes in handy for these lessons. Okay, so 
elephants communicate over long distances through low frequency rumbles. And I'm gonna put THR to abbreviate it. And I demonstrated what they mean by low frequency rumbles that go through the air. And again, THR means through. Frequency. Frequency. F R E Q U E N C Y. Okay, I'm going to continue reading. If so, the discovery would be a major breakthrough in decoding some of the mystery surrounding elephant communication. It might help answer questions such as how the animals seem to sense rainstorms hundreds of miles away. It could be that they feel vibrations from the distant thunder with their feet. That right there, guys. Is very important. That I wrote real lightly, and this is my shiny page, so I can erase it with white background. Okay. Could be they feel vibrations from the distant thunder with your feet, which is what it sounded like on that first page when we were talking about them leaning forward on their feet, right? Is that one way If you want to. This is your only break for the day is all the things that you're writing, these notes. Um, not only would this acknowledge, not, blah, blah, blah. not only would this knowledge help scientists better understand elephants and vibrational communication in general, but it might also help conservationists protect elephants in the wild by understanding how far they might be able to keep in touch with one another and how they may sense their environment. Remember me telling you earlier that animals are critically endangered in the forest. In the plains, they're very much in danger, but not critically. They haven't dropped the numbers 80 to 90 percent. They've only dropped 65 percent in the past 15 years. So 15 years is fast to be losing animals, very fast. They went from, I think it said 50,000 to 5,000, something like that. I mean, the number, the numbers have dropped fast, very fast with a lot of them being in captivity. And once you put them in captivity, there's not many of them they can breed with, so the numbers will rapidly drop from there. Because you need um, diversity for, like you need a lot of different ones for them to 
freeze it. Otherwise, your numbers are just going to start to drop real fast. Okay, what do you think the word vibration means? It's a type of motion in it. Um, so what they have in the book, and we're going to write this here. Okay, so write this word up here. I'm going to put, Megan, did you get these things written down? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Jackson, are you still here? Because I don't see your little box up there on my screen. Okay. okay, it's probably gonna watch the video. Vibration. Okay, I want everybody to write this here. Okay. Type of motion. Whoa, sorry. I'm zoomed in so far. Y'all couldn't see it. Sorry. Type of motion that occurs when matter. moves quickly back and forth and matter is just stuff quicker quickly back and forth oh or up and down So you little people make a lot of vibrations in my classroom, on the stairs. Probably, they probably go berserk with my phone. Maybe hearing sounds we can't hear. I think that's very possible. Mm -hmm. 
normal voice. It's like yelling at a cat. Yes, it is. <laughs>
So I'm supposed to focus your attention, everybody's, on this one sentence that you saw underlined here. Vibrational messages ripple across surfaces like waves on water. Okay. Now, look at that picture. Waves on water. Vibrational messages move like waves on water. There's a picture of waves on water. Where is the vibrational message then the strongest? Where is the wave strongest? In the middle. And where is the vibrational message the weakest? In other words, where is the wave the weakest? On the very outside. So it starts in the middle and it pushes out waves as it goes farther out, right? Does that make sense? That's how a water wave works, right? Water ripples, are y'all paying attention? They're saying vibrational waves move the same way. Starts strongest in the middle and gets weaker as it goes out, but it forces out the energy away from the center. That that's how vibrational waves move. That it moves just like ripples on water. Yes, sir. I know. All right, let's go. Bye. Bye. Yes.